Welcome to RISE Learning Machines Seminars. RISE is Sweden's research institute with more than 3,000 people working on a wide array of topics. My name is Olof Moglia, and I am part of the computer science department and head of these seminars. Um, this meeting will be recorded, and if anyone wants to be removed from this recording, please let us know. Also, make sure to check out all the cool recordings of all the interesting talks that we've had during the last few years. It's on our YouTube channel. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce Jonas Helge, who is a researcher in mobility and systems at RISE, and thus my colleague. Uh, Jonas defended his PhD at Chalmers in 2004, and he studied ma mathematical simulations, optimization, and control, control theory. His research interests include hybrid and electric vehicles and uh, coordinating multiple autonomous vehicles. Uh, I would also like to add that, that this seminar will be sort of uh, the start of a very short uh, uh, special top topic for, for learning machine seminars, as this week and the next week uh, we'll have reinforcement learning as, as the major topic. So next week we'll have Alisa Deblik from Sony AI talking about, um, talking about uh, reinforcement learning for, for playing uh, car driving game. The topic today is reinforcement learning theory, toy problems from OpenAI Gym and application examples. And with this said, I will stop my sharing and hand over the word to you, Jonas. Yes, thank you. Uh, many times since I used uh, Zoom, but I will do my best here. Uh, let's see, now I think I share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, it looks good. Good, when I start off. Um, so my name is Jonas and I will today talk about uh, reinforcement learning. So this presentation is a kind of more of a, a beginner adapted. So if you are a specialist in reinforcement learning or have long experience, I think it's a waste of time to join this uh, presentation. So I think uh, you would have already mentioned some of these things, but I did uh, finish the PhD in 2004 related to hybrid vehicles. And then I, I have been it at, uh, in the industry for some years after that. And roughly in 2016, I started to get an, get an interest in uh, machine learning and reinforcement learning and started to realize that it can benefit my uh, research and, and work uh, related regarding control, <coughs> uh, control of hybrid electric vehicles. And then I started at RISE actually this year after almost 18 years at, uh, at the Volvo Group. Uh, so this is like a top level view of the different subfields in machine learning. We have the more classical field of supervised learning. And there we have a, one part that is like, for example, can be training uh, classical neural networks. We have unsupervised learning and we have the topic of today, uh, reinforcement. Um, learning. So here are some milestones or a brief history of reinforcement learning. The, the basic, some basic concepts were established in the 50s, uh, especially dynamic uh, programming and the Bellman equation. And then in the 80s, there was a guy named Richard Sutton that invented something that is called temporal difference learning that I will talk more about later in this uh, presentation. And, and then now in, uh, in, in some 10, like 10 years ago, uh, DeepMind uh, um, adapted, uh, improved this temporal difference learning and, and used neural networks. And then we have a deep Q learning and 
they applied this on playing multiple different uh, computer games. That is also something I will show later on. And then fairly recently, we have a kind of moon landing event in the computer science. Then, uh, as I guess you know, AlphaGo um, uh, bet uh, won over the champion world champion in in the in the Go game. I think it was 2017. This this happened, and after that the field of machine learning, learning and reinforcement learning have exploded. And very recently, we have also this chat GPT emerging. So what are what is reinforcement learning? The, the idea is that the main idea is that we have a, an agent that is interacting with an environment and it has some kind of memory and that memory evolves uh, then the agent takes different uh, actions in, in, the, in the environment so uh, then taking an action the, the agent gets feedback in terms of the reward and, and an observation that is typically uh, the next state this will be more clear later on in, in the in the presentation, what, what these concepts are. Um, so I will start to define some basic concepts that are needed to, to understand the algorithm I, I will show later on in the presentation. And one important concept is, is policy. And, and that is like, uh, the, the long term, uh, the, the, the decision making, what, what is the best action to take, to take in, in, in a state? It, it br br briefly describes how, how we, the, the decisions the agents are, are taking. And then the environment I have already talked about, but, but that is typically some kind of uh, mathematical model. Mimicking, mimicking the real, real world. It can also be, be the real world, but mostly it's a computer uh, simulation. So the, the environment can translate uh, a given state and action to a new state and, and, a, and a reward. And the state is, is, is uh, a setting of environment. It can, for example, be uh, position of, 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 of a room of a robot or speed acceleration of a car uh, yeah a, a state description and then reward is like a feedback if, if a action is good or bad in the very short term uh, and the value is a feedback or, or an estimation of is is um, uh, what 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 is the long term benefit of, of, of an action or, or being in a specific state? I will give some more concrete example later on on, on, on value. Um, and return is simply the sum of multiple um, re reward. So I will try to give some more intuition on, on these concepts that can be a bit tough to grasp in the, the, the beginning. Uh, but this agent tries to find uh, action or uh, that an action that give that brings the agent to, to, uh, to a state with a higher higher value. Um, and there are uh, different ways uh, to get a reward. Uh, either it has interacts with the environment or it can also have an inner model that uh, predicts the, the reward for taking an action. So, so reinforcement learning is, is much about uh, training the memory 
uh, or, or a policy of, of, an, of an agent. And uh, to, to, to test different states, uh, random actions are, are sometimes um, needed. This is called exp exploration. So, uh, some equations, relations to make things a bit more co concrete. So here is this return measure I talked about earlier. Um, it's simply the sum of, of a set of rewards. And then we have a discount factor. I think it's called epsilon, that Greek letter. Um, and if epsilon is small, then we take like closest to zero. Then we, we, and we take much more consultation to a, a close in future rewards. And if it's like one, when we look far ahead into the to, to the future. So it, it, it has, it's like deciding if how short or long sighted the agent should be. And then the value value function that is uh, the expected um, return and as you can see here we have a greek letter pi so the value uh, depends on on the policy that, that the agent ha has so here we have a concrete example of a uh, of a super simple environment so in in node 3 we can either go to node seven or, or four. So, and the, in node eight and nine, we get either the return minus 10, sorry, the reward minus 10 or reward plus 10. So if a policy is to go uh, down from three to four, then the value of, of uh, state one will be, uh, 10. If, if a policy is to go from 3 to 7, then the value of node 1, 2, or 3, or 7, or 8 uh, is, is 10. So that is the definition of, of the value, the expected return given uh, the policy of the agent. Um, one way to get a better understanding of action selection is the concept of multi-arm bandits. Uh, I don't want, I don't, we're not going into details here, but I'll just show a, a simple example so you get a better understanding of the bandit problem. So here we have three machines or bandits and bandit uh, A gives 10 coins of 10 games, bandit B gives five coins, of the 10 games and bandit C gives one, one coin. And from human intuition, it's fairly self-evident that one should also play, of course, play with uh, uh, the A version. And then they can express uh, an equation, uh, Q, uh, and that will for the A machine be one, and for the B machine be 0 0.5 and for the C machine 0 0.1. So this Q gives like, is like the value or, or, a, or a probability of um, getting coins for, for playing these um, bandits. Uh, and the, the updating equation is, is, is given here. So, so just think what you should take away here should, should be that uh, we, we are like forming a memory Q, QK by uh, interaction with the, with the environment. And then we have this memory, we can like um, decide or, or have a guideline on, on which arm or, or bandit shall we Shall, shall be used. So here we have a, a more formal um, algorithm for, for, for setting this queue that was 
uh, in the previous slide that we repeat this loop forever. We take uh, an, an action depending on this queue, and sometimes it's random, and then we update the, the queue memory, and, and sooner or later it will converge to, to the values that are showed on the different slides. So this is maybe the most simple reinforcement learning one can think about, Le learning how to play um, bandits, multi-arm bandits um, from experience. So uh, and other in, um, important concepts are terminal state on an episode. And here is a classical toy problem, the cliff hanging problem. Uh, so here we can see that we start in the very left and then we go right. And if we go to a cell with this, um, death skull when we are in a terminal state and we get a very bad reward. So uh, terminal state is like ending an, an, an episode. So you can think about an episode like a, a trial, or trial or multiple uh, actions taken in sequence and then an episode ends when we get into a, a terminal state. And, and for this environment, we, have, we happen to have one uh, a possible fail terminal state that is we are falling off the cliff and, and, and actually dying, or we have an, one success, successful terminal state to a high reward that is the, the flag here. So, 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 so typically we, we collect, uh, we, we generate episodes and, and every episode consists of multiple top tuples or, or experiences. Uh, these are typical uh, state, action, reward, and the next state. And then we uh, make, update the memory of, of agent with some appropriate algorithm from these uh, tuples. So that is terminal state and ep episode. Uh, it's also good to know about the Markov property. Um, so simply speaking, one can say that um, a, a, a state shall be expressed in, in such a way that it uh, fulfills the Markov property. And, and that, is, uh, that is like um, good or descriptive enough to ex express a state. So a simple example, it can be if you go back to this cliff environment, uh, when a state should be both X and I position in this cliff, we are not, not fulfilling the Markov property if, if, if just the X position is, is, um, is given. Uh, and, and if um, Markov property is fulfilled, then we have a so-called Markov decision uh, pr pr problem. So just to check uh, if you are awake, uh, I have some questions here, just also to repeat what I have said. Uh, so I hope that some of you can try to answer the first one, what, what is an agent? So are all muted uh, or can someone say something? Everyone is muted. Everyone is muted. <laughs> come, come on, guys. Yeah. Now's nice nice your time to speak up. Yeah. Else I need to repeat everything. <laughs> we'll restart the presentation. Yeah. If you don't say anything, I interpret that you have don't understood anything. Okay, a silent group. I hope from some interaction here.
Ian, do you have a microphone? I do. Yeah. I was going to answer the Markov one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, do that. Can, can so someone say something about the agent? An actor in an environment. Yeah. Good. The decision maker. And the reward? The short term benefit of taking an, an action in a specific state. And, and, and policy, um, that is a really important concept. Does someone remember policy? Decides on an action based on the state. Yeah, very good. How to transform state to the relation between state and action. And a and value, that one I had myself problems with once upon a time. The expected cumulative reward. Yeah, give, given a policy. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's not, return and value is not exactly the same thing, but they are very related. Um, an episode that I think you will recall from this uh, cliff uh, walking. It, it, there was some, someone want, had wanted to say something about the market property. Maybe you have a better definition than me. No, not at all, but it's a way of not carrying all these conditional probabilities into each calculation. So basically it says your next state is only dependent on the current state you are. Mm. Um, and I have a, a, an example from when I learned this, that someone gave me an example of a tennis match. Uh, so if it goes 0, 0, 0, 15, 15, 15, 30, 15, 30, 30, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the state only depends on where you are in the game. However, that's not the same as a game which goes 0, 15, 0, 30, 0, 40, and then the other person catches up, sort of 40, 15, 40, 30, 40, or deuce. Mm -hmm. So the mock of probability says you don't need to remember all of the previous ones. It only depends on the next one. However, it's not a, 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 a coin flip. Uh, it, it does, it carries all these conditional probabilities through to the current one. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. useful <laughs> not to ca calculate all these long conditional yeah. probabilities. Yeah. So that the Marco change would be. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I, I talked about the Markov chain, not the Markov property. I have some more slides to, to show. So I think uh, we, we need to go on. But I. Just, uh, yeah. Just a quick question on, on the Markov property. So either to Jonas or maybe some of the more. Mm -hmm. mathematically inclined uh, in the audience than I am. But formally, I mean, you said the Markov property uh, needs to uh, represent the, the current state enough. But formally, is that correct? Shouldn't it, shouldn't for it to fulfill the property, it has to exactly represent all previous steps? Mm -hmm. I have heard some definition that, that it should uh, represent the, the, the history it, it itself. It should be complete. It's like complete description of the history. Um, that's, I think, is another other definition. Yeah. So, and the reason for why I brought it up is that, in in my view, at least, is that with uh, current um, uh, deep reinforcement learning approaches, uh, 
it's not formally a mark of decision process because we we don't really know if the if the state fulfills the mark of property or not. No. It's an approximation of yeah. that. Yeah, you're absolutely true, and and then we we are all like examples where where you have problems that works despite the, the state doesn't fulfill the mark of uh, property. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you. I think we go on here. Uh, so I was just to want, want to mention something about uh, Bellman equation and dynamic programming. So it's a definition of of a of a value of a state, and that is like we take um, an action in, in a state, and then we we get into uh, a, a new state, and we 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 can say that we have the value of that state. And then we can define the value of a present state by, by, by taking the action uh, that maximizes um, reward. So we can say that the value of the state reflects uh, the, the, the best possible accumulated sum of, of re rewards. Well, like, we are now in the present state. We assume that we in the future do optimal actions. Then we get the sum of rewards, and then the value uh, defines uh, the, the, the best possible um, sum of, of rewards. It's, it's not, in some way reflects what is the best thing. If you do the best thing, what is, what is then the value of, of doing that? Uh, I will give a, a more concrete example of this. Um, so here we have a toy problem and, and a very simple grid problem. And what to, to calculate the values, we in some way go backwards. So we start by these two states that I'm pointing at now. And then we get the value of these two that happens to be three and one. And then we can get the values of these two and finally this one. And when we have these values defined, then we can find the optimal path in, in this directed uh, graph. So this is, uh, many reinforcement algorithms are, are based on this uh, Bellman uh, equation and, and the optimal principle of optimality. So uh, Olof asked me to do to make some connection to uh, work I'm involved in, and here I'm is an example in a project I have been working on fairly recently about uh, energy uh, trading, having a, a battery system selling and buying energy, and there here I did actually use uh, dynamic programming. So we can see here that the, when the price is fairly low then uh, we are buying energy or increasing the state of charge level in the battery and when the price is high uh, we are selling the uh, battery um, energy so, so as i think you understand uh, there are a huge number of possible trajectories in the order of billions and billions but thanks to dynamic programming uh, we, we get it, it dynamic programming make this uh, computational um, feasible. Uh, so now uh, I want to check if you are following again. So here uh, now we say that we have the, the optimal uh, policy. What what is then the uh, the, the values in the different states here in, in this graph. I think number five and eight are fairly self-evident. Eight has the value of minus 10 and, and five is six, but, but for the other states, can someone say uh, about seven, for example? What is the value of being in, in seven, assuming optimal policy?
No guess. Sorry? Minus 10. Yeah, exactly. So the best action is, is to go to eight because then the reward is zero. And then we get a reward of later on a reward of, of minus 10. So that is minus 10. And in four, it is the same ID, then it's plus 10 because the best action is to go to number five directly and then not wait. But what if we are in state three? What is then the, the, the best? What is then the value of state three, assuming uh, that we are fulfilling the, the bell number equation or we have optimal policy? So maximum is 10 plus 10. So, sorry? Maximum is plus 10, is it? Yeah, exactly. Plus. Uh, Plus 10. Thank you, Sven. And again, we have the same thing for one. It's also plus, plus 10. So now I hope you understand uh, optimal policy and the Bellman principle. Uh, so um, here is what I think is the first uh, in reinforcement learning algorithm, or one of the very, very early, early ones. It was invented in the 80s, and it's called uh, Q-learning. Q so uh, we, we have a, a function or a memory called Q. So um, it is tabular, so S and A are discrete values. And then we repeat this loop like for a long time. And then this Q function will be um, defined. So, so we are actually updating the Q value for something that is called uh, the, the TD error. That is called why it's called temporal difference. That is like the, what is inside um, in these brackets. So then the Q has converged this error will, will, be, uh, will be zero. Uh, so, so the Q function says, uh, what is the value of taking action A in state S? That is the Q value. So if, if you want to, to if, if a Q function is defined, then we can for a specific state just test with different A values, and then they pick the one that is the, 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 the largest, largest one. Um, and we also have uh, some probability of taking a, a random action. And that, as I said in, before, that is the reason of that is we want to do exploration. We want to test or uh, identify uh, states uh, that we have not been in before, because we want QSA to be defined for uh, the, 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 all the possible uh, states and, and actions. That's why we're doing this, um, taking a random action, sometimes taking a, a random action. So, to make things a bit more clear, I, I, uh, we have here a, a simple toy problem, a, a grid toy problem. So we have um, one cell that gives plus one reward and one cell that is like a, a trap that gives minus one reward. And then we take an action, it's like 80% that that action will be fu fulfilled and there is a uh, 20% chance that we go in some other uh, non-requested um, direction. So if we have, uh, if you're doing this, now I actually don't remember the discount value, but I think it was, I think it was 0 0.99. Um, but anyhow, when we have done this, we can, we have the Q values identified for all the cells. And here you can see 
the four in the, the figure here you can see the, the four different q values for a specific cell so if we are left to this plus one uh, cell and then the best action is of course to go right and the reason is that qsa is zero dot 918 for going right uh, and it's of course has a much lower value if you go down we can also see that uh, if you are in this cell uh, we have a fairly low uh, value um, the, the best qs assay is the value and the reason is that there is a even if you take the, the, the best action and go up there is a risk that we are uh, we go we are trapped into this minus one due to this stochastic uh, transition. Um, so then the, all the QSA are defined. We have a policy that is the arrows you can see in these very left uh, pictures, and, and the arrows are from is just simply from uh, taking the a reaction with the highest Q. Um, did you follow this example or do you have some questions? So does this sum up into one in some way to form? Sorry, I can't hear that. So, uh, very bad. I, I guess that uh, since the best, uh, pol uh, the best reward is plus one, yeah. can, can you, in, in any weighted way, uh, some of the rewards in the other uh, boxes to one. Uh, you, you get zero reward for all the other boxes. It's only in these two boxes you get any reward. Yeah, but uh, the other has 0.918 and 0.8. Uh, can you in some way understand why you uh -huh. have figures? Okay, why, why, okay, why we don't get uh, plus one here, you mean, or? Uh, yeah, the, the, the reason is is that uh, we, we have a kind of random transition we, we have if you're here we know that the best thing is to go right but even if you decide to go right there is a risk that we go left or we go down so, so that's the reason why, why this is not a, a one value how to say sorry go down is not an option is it you go either up or left or right no nah, but 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 uh, that is the thing with this this example problem. It's you have you have a kind of stochastic transition. So even if you take an action, go right, it's not sure that that is going to happen. It's a risk that you do that the, the actual movement is something different from what you decided. So so if 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 this were like um, one hundred percent probability going right then deciding going right then it then it would have been a one number here but that is not the case for this specific problem i'm really sorry Sven. i can't hear you your sound is terrible sorry uh, uh... When uh, why, why isn't the, the value in the point nine eighteen box? Why is it not uh, point one since it's the point one times one probability? Point one. So, so you have point one one yeah in that box you have point one uh, probability to get uh, plus one reward. Aha, uh -huh. but but you have also this value down here. Uh, so recall this uh, Bellman equation from the from from the future state. Uh, so, so it's a bit more complex than that. So, so we, we are we are all the time applying uh, this one. Uh, so so, so it's both this one and we have uh, a stochastic transition. That that gives that is the reason why. These values are not really easy to to grasp how to say. One 
one really need to do these um, iterations um, to find the, the really correct uh, Q, Q values. I wonder if there's an, a misunderstanding here as well, because uh, the, the, the picture below the world uh, word, uh, it means that you, you make a decision and with 0 0.8, uh, the probability 80%, uh, you will make that, that action. Mm -hmm. And with 0 0.1, you will do another action. Yeah, it right. doesn't mean that you go upwards with eighty percent. Uh, it means ah, that... it's no. So uh, yeah, you're right. This one is not really perfectly illustrated. It's like in the, the, the directions. It's not always upwards. It's like in the uh, the direction. That direction. You... Yeah. So this this here... one should uh, rotate. Yeah, uh, and in this in this particular cell that we're discussing, uh, the optimal choice is obviously to choose to go to the plus one. Uh, uh, square, uh, and that will happen with 0 0.8 probability, yeah. and we will take downwards with 0 0.1, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But the important thing is that you understand that we, from the pre this algorithm, we are defining the 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 values, all of this QSA. That is the important takeaway here, and they that it's like magic that automatically happens if you just run this algorithm. And this transition here can be stochastic as in, in this case. I think I really need to go on. I have many more slides. You don't need to understand every little detail here. Uh, so here is um, this uh, deep Q learning algorithm. So this can be seen as an extension of, of, a, of a standard Q learning. So here, uh, we are much taking the ID from standard Q learning, but we, we introduce, uh, we have a neural network as a memory, and we are uh, storing uh, experience in something that is called a re replay buffer. So store transition, blah, 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 in D, then we, we, we are storing an exper experience in, in D, that is a replay buffer. And then we, we take something, a set of experiences from this buffer, and then uh, we train, uh, we, we partly train the neural network from, from that mini batch. So a mini batch is a much smaller set, typically 10, 20, 30 uh, transitions, but the, the the experience play buffer is typically many thousands or even millions of, uh, of transitions. So, so what is happening here is that the agent interacts with the environment and we are updating the, the memory uh, both from, from new, new and old experiences. And then as in standard Q learning, after a while the memory hopefully converge to, to an optimal or close to optimal uh, uh, policy. Uh, so yeah, that is basically how deep Q learning works. So here uh, we have an, a, a very classical environment. You can also find it in this uh, gym, gym library. Uh, so in this environment, we have a, a chart with a, with a pool. So the task is to balance this pool and the only uh, control input is the force on the cart. So you can either pu push left or right. That is the only way to balance this pool. Uh, and then we have some uh, equations of dynamics of this system. So the, the, we have four states, the position of the cart, the speed of the cart, the pool position, and uh, the, the angular velocity of, of this pool. And when we know these four states, we can, by these equations, uh, calculate a second 
time derivatives, and then they can uh, update the system. So the input is F and the states of the system. Um, so that is basically the, the, the environment. So now I want you to check if you are, have some ideas. What, what are possible fail state of, of this shark pool environment? So if pi is not uh, right up. So if, if pi is not right up. Yeah. yeah almost or, or or if this pi is large so yeah. so so the objective should should be to be upright but it's it's allowed to have a, some small deviation and i think i think it was like 20 degrees was the maximum allowed uh, pool and angle so if, if the angle is uh, outside min minus 20 or plus 20 degrees then we have when we have a fail state. And do we have some more idea on, on fail state? For the cost, the, for the short, uh, are we infinitely right or left, or is it finite? No, that's a good question. And that actually answers the, the second fail state. It's some specific court position, I don't really remember. The, the original setting, but I think it's like one minus one meter and plus one meter is is that is a boundary we should be within. So it's it's not just balancing this it's this pool is also to to uh, control the exposition of of a cart is is a part of this um, uh, problem. So when we have two failed states, bad exposition or bad uh, angle and what about reward functions it's not one correct answer i think we have multiple candidates here but do someone have an have an idea what can we have as a reward function so the reward is that it doesn't fail yeah Exactly. So one idea could be that we we have plus one for every step or time unit we are we are not in a fail state and else it's zero. So so the 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 longer time it's it's uh, stays up uh, or have not failed, then then we get a, a better return or, or value of the system. And we can also think about minus one for falling down and otherwise uh, zero. We can, we can also relate it to angle and there are many possibilities here for, for reward functions. Uh, so here is a small uh, animation and here I actually have in, uh, implemented uh, the, the algorithm in, in code. So here we can see the DQN algorithm in code. So we're taking a random action. We are take applying the, the action we adding experience we are rendering the graphics and then we train the memory uh, from earlier experience in in this uh, uh, replay buffer and then we repeat this for a couple of episodes so here you have an outer loop that is the episodes and and an inner loop is like it's going on until the, we end up in 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 a, in a fail state so here we see uh, the motion of, of the, in the actual training. Uh, we are now uh, gathering inf information to get a better and better network. And now the training is finished. And now we can see the, the policy applied. And as you can see, it successfully um, can uh, balance this, uh, uh, this pool. Uh, so that is one um, example of DQN in action. And here we have a very famous paper written by DeepMind. I think it was like 2013. And then we played, applied DQN on many, many different uh, computer games. 
And here you can see one game. I don't remember where uh, it's breakout. And here you can see that you it it is it of course improves during training, but it also finds the trick after some while that it should break a hole in the in the very left side or some of some of the sides, and then the ball will enter that one. Um, so it's like yeah, it it gets like much 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 better playing this than, than a than a normal than a hu human player. Uh, so that is DQN in in action, and this was like ten years ago, and much has improved since that. Uh, okay, now we should look at another technique. So now now we can almost forget everything you have learned, and now we will have a look on, on some so another approach. That is called gradient-based uh, policies, and the idea is that you take the uh, derivate uh, of the policy and then you use that derivative to, to adjust the parameters in, 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 the, in the policy. And so the intuition is that uh, we, we, if, if the return associated to a state and action is high, um, when we want to have higher probability of taking that specific action again. That is the basic idea. And here is the uh, pseudo code for the most basic um, policy gradient method. It's called reinforce. And I think it's also from the real world from the 80s or beginning of the 90s. That is like Stone Age in the machine learning timeline. Uh, so this is the, the most basic one. So we are updating. Again, we are generating an episode, uh, following the, 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 the policy. And then uh, we are updating the policy from the experience in, in that episode. But we don't anymore have this uh, queue memory. We, we now are changing parameters in, in a policy. And this policy is typically uh, um, utilized as, as a so-called softmax function. So there's a specific likelihood to take an action in, in every state, and then we adjust uh, the parameters of, of this uh, softmax um, um, function. Uh, so so to, to, to get a better feeling, uh, again, we take a very, very, very simple problem, and that is the bandit problem with just two arms. So, uh, and uh, one arm uh, has, every arm uh, has a, some kind of probability of winning. So for the left arm, it's like 10% chance to get the coin. And for the right arm, it's 50% chance, chance to get the coin. And the very beginning of, of, the, of the evolution, there are equal probabilities uh, to select any of the arms. But then uh, we are testing the different arms many, many times. And uh, by time, it gets a higher probability to take the right arm, uh, the, the arm that give, gives uh, uh, a coin. And, uh, and in this example, in this plots, this reinforce algorithm has um, been applied. Of course, it's a, it's a trivial environment, a trivial example, but, the, but, but it shows anyway the ba basic idea uh, with this uh, policy gradient methods. So uh, there is a lot of research now going on, but there are some papers uh, proving, indicating that there is better, better convergence in, in these policy gradients. And that is a really important thing because value-based methods have, tends to be more likely to, 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 to diverge, to, to, to not find a, a, a good, good solution. Another big thing is that one can also use it for taking continuous actions. That is not possible with, with value-based uh, methods. Uh, OK, um, Olof asked me for some 
um, experience of reinforcement learning. And one experience I had was uh, a, a success, successful thesis work I supervised some years ago. And then we used it for a power control of, of hybrid electric vehicles. And then an, um, a, a reinforcement learning agent was setting uh, something called equivalence factor, weight factor, deciding if, if uh, diesel fuel should be regarded as uh, high or low in price compared to, to battery energy. Uh, and that also paper, that thesis work transformed into a paper, published paper later on. And then I have also been involved in, in some patents regarding uh, uh, control of autonomous uh, vehicles. And, and then we used reinforcement learning for defining a policy that decides how, um, what decisions the, the vehicles uh, should do. Uh, so this is an on, a newly published paper that I uh, have been involved in, and, and by reinforcement learning, we could learn the vehicles to, to use um, this sharding station, a sharding station that is in the very lower left uh, corner of, of, of this site. So, so one example can be that if two vehicles are approaching this sharding area, uh, the first one should not grab the sharding station if, if the aftercoming one has a really poor uh, sharding level, because then the first one will, will block the aftercoming one. Easy to say, but very tough to, to, to find uh, an optimal policy. Um, and next year, I will start up um, a thesis work. Um, regarding energy trading. So it will be an extension on what I showed earlier use, using dynamic programming for, for energy trading. Um, okay, so that I think was actually what I plan to, to say today. And I also want to be clear that we have just scratched the surface of reinforcement learning. This is a very introductionary presentation. And there are many things we, I have not even mentioned that you can see here on, 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 this, uh, on this slide here. And I, as I understand the research, much of the research direction now in the world of reinforcement learning is uh, something called uh, uh, ectocritic methods that uh, have a, a safe update of, of, of uh, of, of the parameters in, in, in the policies to, to lower the risk of uh, not converging. That is a hot topic now. now. Um, so I just want to share some, some reflections I have in this field. And, and one is that I think the only way to learn about reinforcement learning is to, to apply it on, on, on many example problems. It's not enough to just read some books and some papers. One need, really need to go, get your hands uh, dirty. Uh, and yeah, it takes time to, to learn this field. Uh, some, some courses is not, uh, is not enough. And it's not a silver bullet. It is, it's not a quick fix. And I think one should carefully look for alternative techniques before applying reinforcement learning. Uh, it's one of many tools, and it's not a silver bullet. Thank you, Jonas. I think I have one minute left. So I'm a bit ahead of the schedule. Sure. Great, thank you. So, so, and this, um, I mean, looking forward to, to all the things that we sort of haven't scratched uh, during this seminar. I mean, uh, this was a great introduction to, as I said, uh, the theme, that's, uh, it's two weeks long. So next week we'll have Alisa Deblik, who is um, uh, a researcher at Sony AI in Stockholm. 
Uh, she'll talk about superhuman raising agents, uh, an agent that they've developed and published in the Nature uh, Journal. Uh, it's called Gran Turismo Sophie. I was trained through deep reinforcement learning. And then I'll also add that on March 7, we will have a research researcher from Microsoft uh, Research in, in Amsterdam, Elise van der Poel. Uh, and she's going to talk about symmetries in multi-agent reinforcement learning. Ah, oh, interesting. So, so those are our November twenty third. That's next week, and March seventh uh, next year. Yeah. So we have a lot of interesting re reinforcement learning to look forward to. Yeah, I have actually on my to do to do list to learn about this multi-agent reinforcement learning. Yeah. Yeah. And in the chat for everyone, we have we have the paper that that uh, Alisa is going to talk about next week. Thank you for that, Ian. Welcome. Uh, just one thing, I think if people are a bit nostalgic and would like to learn this, the Open G Open AI Gym, mm -hmm. and especially the Atari ROMs are a lot of a lot of fun. Uh, Jonas showed us the inverted pendulum, well, balancing one, but there are some other favorites like Space Invaders and Defender. And stuff. Yeah. Are very playful and you can learn. Yeah. So, so you, you can actually download Python code from, for these environments. That, that is really useful. So you don't need to do everything from scratch. Yeah. So I, I really recommend if you want to learn reinforcement learning, uh, so study the theory. Down, start to download some some of the simpler environments and, and play with them. Great. So thank you everybody and especially Jonas. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome back next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very instructive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Jonas. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam.